everyone. Thank you all for coming out today. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about a programming language called NORD I created while I was at the Recurse Center. Again, my name is Ahmed Abdallah. Um, so to understand why I created this language, first you need to understand that I'm from Sudan, a country where the first language or the main language is Arabic. And I moved to the U.S. when I was nine years old. And I realized that I would have never learned to program if I didn't uh, learn English when I came here. Um, but in the year 2013, I came across a post on Hacker News by a uh, programmer here in Brooklyn called Ramzi Nasser, and he created a, an Arabic program, programming language called Qalb, and uh, Qalb means heart, and it's a functional Lisp-based programming language. And I thought, that, wow, this is so cool. It'd be great if like, kids around the Arab world had a language they could use to learn programming, because to learn to program in English, it requires like, a lot of English proficiency. Like, you have to understand you know, docs and tutorials and stack traces. It's not like a you know, minimal amount of English you need to know to get started in programming. And this is at the same time when everybody is like, jumping onto you know, Code Academy for kids and all these things, Let's get everybody learning to program. And where I'm from in Sudan, to learn to program or to have this amount of English fluency uh, requires a lot of privilege. You have to be like, wealthy to go to international schools or to, go to like, good, get a really good education uh, in English. And so I thought it'd be a great experiment uh, to you know, take a language like this and make it more mainstream. But my one thing about uh, Ramzi Nasser's Qalb is that, and this is my ignorance at the time, is that it's a functional Lisp-based programming language. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is great, but it'd be nice if it was like imperative, you know, algo-based. Uh, and thankfully, that was like an ignorance I had at the time about like, you know, functional Lisp-based programming language. But you know, thank, thankfully for this ignorance, because it led me to start this project. Um, so NOR is an imperative algo-based programming language that I created. Uh, specifically thinking about myself is that if I was a little kid, if I was a you know, high schooler, middle schooler, um, you know, what would like, be natural for me to learn? And this is a sample program in NUR. Um, I think you can all tell what this program does. Um, <laughs> but in case you can't, we'll walk through it anyways. And so the first line in this program says, Le fi 1 to 100, which basically means that you know, for each thing in the range of 1 to 100, and then the second line is uh, check, take the number in the for loop and then check if it's uh, mod, get the mod 3 value of it. And so there's a function invocation and assignment expression. And then the third line is just print the number in the for loop. And then the third thing is check if the mod 3 is you know, equal to 0. If it is, it's clearly divisible by 3. Um, print that out. Print or print fizz. If it's divisible by 5, uh, print buzz. And then the final parts to this. Uh, you know, program here are the keywords uh, bus, which in Arabic means like the end or the end. And in this, in this program, I make a call to a function here on the second line. And that function is just, you know, get the mod th with three of the number. And this is the function in NOR. And so the function start, start, starts off with instruct a worker, uh, you know, and I, I try to make it like this childlike, you know, silly, uh, language, because I want it to be like more natural feeling. And then you say, you give the function name, then you give the function arguments that it will take, and then you say to do, because I'm like, if I was a little kid, I kind of want to understand it as, you know, tell something to do these things for me. And then you have the function body, and in this case, I take the argument that was passed in, I mod it with three, and I store the result in a variable called dal or d, um, and then I return that. And so that was a, you know, fizzbuzz in nor. And I won't be able to get into the internals of how I created NOR, but I'll just tell you that I use a tool called PEG.js, uh, which creates a compiler for you. And it's a really nice tool if you want to you know, create your own small DSL, you should check it out. Um, but one thing that sort of came into question while I was working on this is, how do I go about choosing keywords? Uh, and Arabic is like a big language, it's, you know, very, there's a lot of variety to it. And you know, there's classical Arabic, there's modern standard Arabic, and there's my own dialect of Arabic. And, if you, know, if you don't understand it, uh, the tree is kind of something like this, and it's an approximation. So that you have classical Arabic, which is like really old Arabic going, dating back to the seventh century. And then you have dialectic Arabic, which is what people use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what like, me and my mom talk with. And then you have uh, modern standard Arabic. This is what like, uh, official court documents are in. This is what um, the, you know, news is in, like Al Jazeera. They want to reach a wide audience, so you, they'll use this very formal uh, Arabic that's not particular to anybody. But for Noor, I, I especially used uh, my Sudanese dialect, because I was thinking about myself. It's like, what would I, what would like really get me started on this? And uh, just to show you a map of all these dialects and how they vary, um, you know, I'm from Sudan, and so this is the area where my dialect is really prevalent. And, but you know, there's different dialects across North Africa and the Middle East. 
And you know, when I when Newer got public, um, some people really liked the fact that I used my own dialect. Some people were trying, you know, thought that I was Egyptian because they're trying to, you know, triangulate my where I'm from based on a few key words, and that's kind of hard to do. Uh, some people I thought I was from like the Gulf, uh, and I'm not from the Gulf. Uh, and some people really didn't like it. Some people were like, "Oh, it'd be great if it would have used like real Arabic." Um, that's okay. I knew they were coming. So, <laughs> but my goal, or the reason I intentionally did this, anyways, is because if you go to like the Middle East and you listen to an Egyptian TV show, uh, it's in the Egyptian Arabic dialect. If you listen to a Syrian song, it's in the Syrian dialect. So all these like media and artists like export their own dialect. So I'm kind of like, I'm gonna export my dialect here. And uh, so. But when you th if the general question is like, is a programming language supposed to be like this you know, generic tool, like a core document that you know, should follow strict guidelines, or is, does it, the, a programming language reflect the aesthetics of the creators behind it? And the thing is, like, whatever language you're using, there's no like, right or wrong about the syntax. It's reflecting whatever the people in the language community behind it chose to do. Um, but also during this experience, uh, I created Noor using, uh, on the browser using PEG.js. Initially, I wanted to do it in Python, and I was going to make it as a desktop app. And when I created, I downloaded Kivi, which is a GUI framework in Python, and I started, uh, you know, I created my ed editor, and I started typing into my keyboard, and the Arabic text was showing up all broken. I was like, what the heck is going on? Maybe I'm missing a plugin. Maybe I need to download something. Uh, something just didn't make sense. And, uh, and that's when I really came to learn about how Arabic text is rendered on your computer. Um, there's actually, it's not handled by the operating system or whatever. Like you, the framework that you're using has to handle it for you. So I went to a fun deep dive about how all that works, and I'll just show you how that is. So when a user types Arabic, or when, there's, when you see encounter Arabic text in a file, you have to run it through an algorithm known as the Baidai algorithm, which is a Unicode bidirectionality algorithm. Then you have to reshape that text, and then you finally get nice looking Arabic. Um, as for how the Unicode bidirectionality algorithm works, so Arabic is a right to left language, so the Unicode Baidai algorithm specifies uh, a base direction or a line direction, and this is like this bottom long red line here specifies the direction that the text will flow in when it's rendered as the user is typing it. And then for every single word, uh, it has its own direction. Uh, so this word, or this line right here says Bang Bang Con 2018 in New York City. Um, and the terms Bang Bang Con you know, obviously flow from right to left because they're Arabic keywords, but in Arabic we read numbers from uh, left to right. So the visual cursor, as the user is typing in a number, has to start flowing from the left to the right. Now, then when the user types an Arabic uh, word again, the, cursor, the visual cursor needs to jump back to the end of the line and start flowing from right to left. And if they type an English word, it starts to flow again from uh, left to right. So I, I was about to like, implement my own Arabic text editor, but it was just like, this is like, it was out of scope because there's a lot of rules to handling by die. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, it was good to learn. And then the other thing that you have to do when handling Arabic text uh, is that you have to reshape it. So Arabic letters uh, don't take the same form as like, they do in English. Uh, like, you know, you have, and Arabic letters have to be connected and they take a different shape depending on where they're at in the word. Um, so in this top line, I have the letter, the Arabic letter H, 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 space, H. Uh, and the way this actually gets displayed uh, is like so below, so letter H, looks like this when it's in the initial state, looks like this when it's in the middle state, and then it has a different look in the final state, and then you have to reshape it. And uh, uh, there's more to reshaping than just simply like looking up the letter and where it belongs. There's also these things as, uh, as ligatures, Arabic, certain Arabic ligatures are mandatory, so if you see two letters, you don't just look up the initial and final forms, but you have to look up, uh, there's a precedence where the ligature takes, has to be shown. And there's more to Arabic text reshaping and by dye, but this is just sort of like a, one of the, some of the nuances I came across when it comes to rendering Arabic text. Um, but if you do that all correctly, you, you finally get to see nice flowing Arabic text that you can read from right to left. And when it comes to Baidai, it's also an algorithm that applies to Hebrew, Yiddish, uh, Urdu, Persian, and a host of other Arabic, or a host of other right to left languages. Um, but when I was look, doing research for Noor, I was trying to like look at like, uh, what did old mathematicians use in their like math work? So a lot of programming ties to math you know, in some really close ways. And I was trying to think of like what, uh, what did like Al Khwarizmi, who's the guy who created algebra, or he's known a lot for his you know for algebra, what did like he use in his uh, textbooks? And I, I came across the term shay, which is like which means thing, which is like a term I use in everyday Arabic even now. And uh, in my Fizbuzz program, this term is like right here. Uh, it's the value in the for loop that I iterate with. 
And it turns out Shea is how we get the letter X in math. Like, you know, if you went to school here, mathematics is always like, you know, find X or, you know, Y is X squared plus X equal, one, you know, plus one. Um, it turns out it comes from this like word Shea way back when. Um, so this was like, you know, a fun random fact I'll leave y'all with. But uh, thank you for your time. That's all I have. <laughs>